Um, we are uh, we're frequently asked uh, to uh, take part in uh, in harmony workshops, uh, telling people about how we how we do what we do, and uh, it uh, very quickly becomes a matter of uh, technical stuff, thirds and fifths and uh, augmented fifteenths and things like that, <laughs> and people's eyes glow and glaze over a little bit. And, um, uh, talking about not only not only the, the notes that we sing, but how we go uh, go across a song and and try to try to um, match our harmonies to what's happening in the song is is, uh, is something that's very difficult to describe. <coughs> and so I thought that uh, maybe I would try to demonstrate what we do um, instead of telling people what we do. So um, I took one of our songs, John Barleycorn, and. Um, I made it into, I changed the words into a play-by-play -play of what we are doing uh, uh, as we're doing it. And so this is John Barleycorn's instruction. When we perform John Barleycorn, I start the song alone. Then Shelley joins in unison and duplicates the tone. We break apart in harmony, but end again as one. When and joins in the final line, the song has now begun. The first line of the second is sung in voices three. For now's the time to set in place the basic harmony. There are no big surprises yet, but there are some in store. So when we sing the final line, it's as we sang before. Then and drops out in stanza three and takes a little break. Just for the change in texture and the difference that can make. The duet does not last too long till and comes back again. We end the verse just as before and keep nice and plain. And now it's Shelley's turn to rest and a knee and take the floor. And likes to sing a different line than the one she sang before. Anticipate then Shelley joins in just in time to jangle one big chord. We like to Change things towards the end so listeners don't get bored. The harmonies turn upside down as the ballad's end draws nigh. Then Shelley takes the melody and Ian sings a pie. Next line we change so Oh. 